we need to record the founding active partners that were here and, and making this future happen. So we're just going to take a quick informal group photograph up front here so that uh, we, can, we can post this for the public. It will, of course, be openly licensed under the Free Cultural Works approved t shirts and license. T shirts. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? We're going up here. Oh, it's the photo. Oh, I thought we were going to in front of the uh, protesters. Oh, that's the old teammates. They don't have to be like that. I'll have to do it like a month. Model life. Model life. And colleagues, I, I will distribute the photo to everyone so we don't all have to send our cameras. Just 
basically conferring because you need to get the names of the folk who are contributing to move, move this forward. And then we have a very elaborate table that was developed by the project planning group. But I'm just a concern um, that we may not be able to complete the entire table. So, so my suggestion is the following that we identify a key <coughs> convener from this meeting for the project planning group who then will undertake to identify the institutional representatives for the other the components that we need, need to, uh, to fill out. Does that seem like a reasonable uh, approach to move forward in terms of our yeah. current time frames? Yeah. 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 Okay. So what we need, what the names that we've got so far from, from, from you is who, Dr. Angela Murphy? That's a special role on the evaluation. I wouldn't see Angela as a company in which she will coordinate you know, the evaluation in the from the contact people. Right, so that's your good. Do you want to um, nominate someone else? Do you well, David and I are up in the final story of the default people. Rory, are you happy with the AU? Am I happy with the AU? Yes. Yes and no. We'll discuss it over a beer. Yes. <laughs> uh, but in terms of the contact person who will then help identify the Yeah, so AU. far it's me to like find a sucker. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, TRU? Happy. Uh, SNHU, Kevin, right? Yeah, that's yep. good. Uh, Naran for nominating, confident with that, or happy with that. A target colleague, um, Robin, will you stand in there? Message, not uh, founding action partner. Arco, I will follow up with Arco. BC campus, uh, shall we nominate David? Paul. <laughs> or Paul? Yeah, nominate Paul. Do you Paul. Have what do you reckon? I or Oscar? Oscar. Oscar. Yeah, oh, it okay. could be one or the other, I would think. Yeah. Right, let's just, let me say ask David. Uh, 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 and I'll, I'll end the section <coughs> there, right? Dwayne, uh, to ask. Matt, how many David is still with us? Okay. Uh, NMIT? Yep. Great. Yes. 
suppose it would be you too. Yeah. yeah. In terms of convening our group, if we've got everyone uh, re talking the group, and Kevin's the one with the sort of project management background, to kind of do it if people are comfortable with that, or act as a convener. Are you still happy with that? Kevin, I'm giving out my ask with you around, you know, to help fill out the PM related aspects of the table in terms of getting the ownership of the money and the cost. Sure. And, and how we work, you saw what we did with Anchor Partner statements, right? And we, we publish them openly as we receive them, and you'll be noticed by your answers. That was <laughs> <laughs> um, All good. Okay. Yeah, I think it enables us to move forward as soon as we can. Uh, so, sorry, I'm, I'm just not clear. So, how are we going to decide? So, we'll volunteer to be involved in different aspects of the logic model. Yeah. Look, at, at, at this point, it is, is, is a commitment that this anchor person will help identify the relevant roles of four people relating to the larger metric of the project plan. Okay. So, there are different things within this model. And sure. What we're saying is, you might not be. Mm. The person that's doing this in your organisation, but we needed a contact person that agrees to follow through and get us the right names. Yeah. Okay. For the different components that you volunteer as an organisation to contribute to. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, if you mentioned it, a tapestry or a matrix of things that we've got to get done, it's filling the matrix sure. with the right people to get it done. Because mm. we can spread the load across our institutions. We've tried, Kevin's got a model with a one page overview which will just chunk the main level, not the dependencies within, but just say curricula. So there's an example, you know, you know, example of it's quite a detailed yeah. you know, table, you see. And then and we'll elaborate that so it becomes a sort of reference point for the project plan will require elaboration and timelines, but it will enable us to start filling out the matrix and creating the matrix. Everyone feeling comfortable? That's good. Is there anyone going to say anything about it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I want us to do, just in terms of wrapping up, uh, is just two quick or well, two things. One, just to re reiterate our, uh, the OER Foundation's open, transparent uh, governance model in terms of how we work. Um, because I do think that's important. Um, everything we do, we do under radical, well, using principles of radical transparency. Our funding, our budgets, our decisions, the plans we put together are all done openly and transparently in the wiki. Everything we do, you can see. Even to the extent of our grant proposals that we put out, for donor funding for what we do. We develop openly as open content and licensed materials. And the reason we do that, and people often tell me, Wayne, you're crazy to do that because what if somebody steals your good idea for funding? Mm -hmm. But you must remember this is an open model. If somebody can do a, or, or, or complete an open project that's contributing to the OER University Network, quicker, faster, cheaper than we at the OER Foundation can do, they are the people that should be doing the project. And because the outputs would be openly licensed, um, we benefit by that. Um, and, and, so we, and, and that's why the model works. Open is it's upside down thinking, but it actually works. And we have a very good example. Um, at the Basque University, Tutecri uh, developed and published a report on the very first meeting. It was openly licensed, uh, I, I can't remember if it was CC by or CC by, so I don't remember what it was, but it was an open license. Um, when we were approached by the Hewlett Foundation to consider an application for the OER University, we were able to take that whole report and rework it and remix it for the uh, funding proposal to Hewlett. So it is just a very, very good example of how this radical openness and radical transparency gets, enables us to do things with incredible speed. 
And to remember the OER Foundation is an institution that has two full-time staff. That's it. That's all we've got. However, we have a group of hundreds of volunteers around the world that contribute, and now with the OER University Partner Network, um, that they, you know, they start that are working towards a, you know, a greater goal of openness. So that's why the model works. And I, I just need to put that out there, because what we're going to, to uh, discuss now is a, uh, an issue of funding. And one of the things I learned, I grew up in ICTs for development, and I spent most of my working career working in Africa. And one of the things I learned very early in my career is that all good projects get funded in the long run. All good projects do get funded. Um, don't design projects with the purpose of getting funding. Design solid projects that can stand on their own. And if you get funding, it will help you achieve your aims a lot quicker. But you need to have the strategy right. What I've included in the folder is the, the next generation learning challenge wave three bit. Uh, I was alerted to this by a, a number of people in the field. Um, and if you work through the proposal, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to read it, but I will highlight certain uh, aspects um, here. And if you look at these aspects, it, it would appear that the OER University Network model is in fact a very, very strong proposal for what next, the next generation wave three challenge is all about. Strategic, and then this is the, uh, sort of the, the donor equivalent of venture capital. So what it's about is getting you know, strategic money to get important things in place in order to achieve long-term goals. The proposal is for up to a million US dollars. The first uh, shortened proposal needs to be submitted by uh, February 9. The real uh, project is about on page on, on page three is really tackling the iron triangle we've been talking about. How do we reduce reduce cost of post secondary provision in the college sector? How do we improve quality? Um, and how do we widen access? So it's really about the iron triangle and these are underlying principles of what we are doing with the OER University initiative. The really important bits are uh, on page five. And at the bottom of page five, we have to develop a model which will achieve the 55 five targets. What are the 55 five targets? We have to design a delivery system for post secondary education that will achieve a completion rate of 50% of the students enrolling in the model. Mm -hmm. okay. Those of us that have been in distance education know that that is an achievable target. The five, the model that we design must not cost the student for the year study. Uh, was that for the year study? Yes, for the year study should not be in excess of 5,000 to 7,500 US dollars. Wearing my accountant hat, I am reasonably sure that one could get a model like this working for roughly for a year study for between 1,000 to 2,000 US dollars if we're smart. That, I mean, those are the parameters. And the second five is that this model over a five year period uh, should serve and uh, you know, 5,000 students. Now, I, I, you know, I, I ask you, um, in, in fairness and reasonableness, do you think that the OER University concept could achieve those targets? Okay, so here, if you go and look at page seven, there's a little, there's a little more detail in terms of the parameters of the funding proposal. Um, no later, and the delivery no later than fall of 2013. Okay, we've already got a program outline for a prototype, which we, you know, we collect in a very broad terms. We already have that on the table. The intended outcomes, we can have a look at that. Um, 
the student population in terms of the legible for Pell Grants, I have no idea what that is. And this is why we need to rely on our colleagues from the US. Um, the learning model, um, and, and gee, this is going to be tough, um, at least 100%, oh, between 25 and 100% to be delivered online. This is going to be very tough for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, um, the, 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 the model is looking at how K-12 learners, the school learners, can qualify for student credit. Now, I know here yeah, at New Zealand, we've got a report of the STAR program. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and so then already there are models where we can, can do this within the network. And so, um, you know, that's it's just a very, very interesting proposal. And of course the requirement uh, is, and, and, and I agree, it needs to be a US-based institution to lead. The RFP that, uh, does encourage uh, consortiums, um, and uh, we have a pretty interesting international consortium. Uh, we represent uh, six countries. We have 13 institutions from six countries working on four continents. That's, uh, that's, that's where we're at. And so the thinking here today is just to brainstorm a couple of ideas in terms of if we were to put a funding proposal in, which I believe we should, what are the strategic components of the model that we need in order to achieve future success? In other words, what are the bits of the model which we actually don't have in place now or that you can't easily achieve within our normal operations um, to move forward? Because I think that's the smartest place to invest uh, strategic money uh, if we're thinking of long-term sustainability. And the kinds of areas, you know, that immediately spring to my mind are things like some of the infrastructure components around Academic Volunteers International. Because that's a piece of the puzzle we don't have in place. Um, other components may be how we do cross-border articulation or institutional understanding as an example, because we don't have that in place yet. So one of the other things that you know, we kind of don't have in place, I mean, things to fund course development or course design it's something cost, I, I don't think it's a strong, a strong proposal in my personal view. You may, you may have other, other views around that. So it's just a bit of initial thinking. And so the open question is, what are the strategic projects we collectively think are worthy of preparing and submitting a proposal? And number two, whether our American partners would be prepared to lead an, an open proposal uh, for the next gen wave three grants under an open content license. And that open content license bit is very, very important because if it's not under an open content license, if we are unsuccessful with the bid, it makes it very difficult to reuse <coughs> for other sources of funding for strategic work. So those are my ideas and it's really, I'm just opening opening it up for discussion. And I can I really appreciate your views, uh, your views on this. <coughs> Thoughts? Just a strange question, perhaps, Wayne. Do you have any sense of what sort of um, other bodies are going to be in this space? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say because, uh, and I'm speaking openly to the public, right, so everybody can, can hear me. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to know what others are doing in, in this space. I can only speculate what others might be doing. One of the things I've noticed in, in, in the open education movement is the total lack of collaboration between the open projects when it comes to developing funding proposals, because it's just totally ludicrous. A guiding principle which I've used in the OER Foundation is you know, every week I get one or two requests to sign a letter of endorsement for some or another funding proposal. Because I want to get the OER Foundation's name on the proposal to increase the chances of getting, getting money. I have one requirement, and that is, will you release your, uh, your grant proposal and an open content license? If that answer is no, my response is no, we don't care. 
and it becomes a very powerful filter because the people that we work with are the, are the people that are very committed to achieving what we want to achieve, and I don't waste eons of time with failing projects. So, from that perspective, and, and, and the advantage is if we do now develop the proposal openly and say, this is what we're doing, we've held a meeting, and so many people got together, this is what we are doing. It's openly licensed. If people want to join us, then. Well, that was part of my thinking that there's an opportunity there for um, other people to see the potential and, and possible interactions and uh, things with us. They may see it in a different value, in a different light, perhaps a scale, and come on board as um, Absolutely. the strength of the application. And, 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 and we'll use a share like provision on the proposal because if somebody does steal the idea, um, they've got to attribute. <laughs> Because there's a, there's a history here. I mean, this is a project that's developed and mature over a period of time. And this is not something that's happened overnight. And we, we, we have to have a track record. So that's a good question, Robin, yeah. Um, obviously, and what I like about the next gen proposals, you know, the first round of proposals is actually quite a simple proposal. It's really sort of an initial. You know, this is what we plan to do. And if you are so then select, you then are invited to do more detailed work. So I think I think it's a good model. Is there a problem in that this cert this is specific to the United States? Since I don't think I don't think that it's a problem that is specific to the United States. Specifically because it's an open model. If you get it right in the US, it will export rather well. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's my that's my gut feel. Yeah. I have a feeling having worked on grants in the United States as well as here in the UK and Europe, that um, it would depend on our US leader as to how often they were for working with us. But for example, in both Europe and probably other countries, and certainly this one, what might happen is if we get a nice proposal here, we might put in another one alongside it and say, we want to join in where not committed under this because money is targeted at the USA, but they're happy for us to join in and complement the work. And this is what we would do with essentially your New Zealand money or your European money and so on. That works with the European Commission as well. Yeah. It works federally as well. Yeah. So um, that's one way of thinking about it. And I, I, I also firmly believe that in a globally connected world and international consortium, uh, <coughs> as we are, um, is a much stronger proposal than a single institution, but in, at any rate. And, and to be quite honest, I actually don't care who gets the money. I have to read that. What I care about is getting the stuff done that we need to move this forward. That's my personal view. Others may differ. I differ. I'm true. I'm we want the maintenance usually. You're going to get a skin? I'm doing the work. Yeah. No, but I mean, you, you, I mean, I need to get that out on the table. This is not OER OER Foundation trying to chase a million dollars. That's not what this is about. So, would the money, I mean, I'm just talking to Phil Allen and Kevin, would the money be targeted and honest within your institutions? Do you see any problem with that? Are your institutions already thinking of bidding for some money in the share? Do part of the work. We are putting in a proposal for the Canadian Grant Fund in the same position. I'm trying to pull up emails that I've got from uh, okay. <coughs> my people around. I'm not sure if it's the same grant. This one's listed as 3B. Um, yeah, this is 3B. It's, it's, it's a separate grant. Yeah. Okay, so I need to check. I've got some detail in my email about Wave 3 funding, breakthrough models for college readiness and completion, but I sense that's slightly different then. We've put in, well, not to this, but to others, two proposals, and we've uh, been rejected in both. And uh, we've also been accepted in both, too. We've, I don't think 
Yeah. I think that they judge them on their merits. And, uh, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I also know that BC Campus is also a next gen recipient as one of the partnerships and one of the previous bits. Yeah, I, okay, I, so, um, I don't well, think it's yes, at this point in time, we're not necessarily going to ask, be able to ask the question around our US partners, which is fine. Um, so you, I mean, you'll need to go back to your institutions and, and find out. Right. And, and, and that's good. This is due to the 11th round? Right. I know, but there are three rounds. Oh, okay. We'll be so, looking okay. in February the 9th. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We are suggesting the February a bit, yeah. Okay. Is it possible that if your grants were for the 11th of November and were not successful, that you would feel That's more comfortable? That's my motion for the 11th. Tonight. Because I think the deadlines are the response to the finalists, I think, are included and show up the date. So the people who applied for the November deadline would know mm. maybe before the February deadline. Is that true? Okay. Um, yeah, we need to look, look into that deep. So we've got a couple of activities to do here. Next open question. Would Anchor Partners uh, feel comfortable if I were to approach and recruit another US institution uh, to possibly submit a bit uh, around our, our work here? And I'm not saying I'll get it right, but uh, any help you can offer on that around the 23rd. Well, the second one that we have yeah. to be open no, to. No, the deadlines in the 11th, they'll be notified on the 23rd. Yeah. But the, the deadline for the finalists to be announced on the November 11th is November the 23rd. So that would be a good Next time week, yeah. to say, well, we'll do it for February, February the 9th. And the funding date for the first grant is February the 8th. So we wouldn't have time if you made the final. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think it's a generic thing that we should probably be preparing a, a, a proposal anyway. But I, but I wouldn't say that because if, if, if they are finalists, they can put in for the other one as well. So yeah, then again, it, won't, it would not affect putting in another one, would not I affect agree. the final decision. I, I agree, but I could usually work for an institution that would not allow them to yeah. as a matter of principle. Mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with that approach, yeah. but some institutions do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so, so that, I mean, we know that's uh, a critical part issue that you need to sign mm -hmm. on. If, if we were to find a, a, a sporting partner, including our existing you know, uh, mm -hmm. US partners, what areas do you think we should focus on if we were to submit a bid? Which would be the developed opening and transparency for everybody to see? Any particular I, ideas? I, I, would, uh, I, I would strongly support that we go in for the testing because we know that funders are very interested in... Uh, they have identified that the main problem with OERs is uh, they're not being used and the, the, there doesn't seem to be any sustainable model for learners using OER um, for getting accreditation. And so for a robust testing scheme, I, I think that uh, they'd be very interested in that, that if we could uh, apply for that, uh, um, I think it would be a, a one that they would look at very seriously. Not that there were another uh, uh, things that we could look at. Uh, that, that one to me. or even or even we could make it more generic for the OERU and have that as one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So testing this, I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Which really means the evaluation of the pilot. Is that mm -hmm. a so no, no, I'm looking at testing uh, is uh, computerized, uh, yeah, to computerized yeah, assessment. The, the major strategic focus of the bid. It's really about assessment then. Well, that's you what see, I... I'm getting two things. I would, I would suggest that uh, it would be about uh, automated uh, testing and assessment, uh, um, how we can uh, uh, cost-effectively uh, assess students for giving them credentials. 
Oh, we tend to think that that as part of a grand would be, would be more attractive. I mean, the money is quite large, so mm -hmm. I would be comfortable putting up the whole model, including the volunteers and the assessment processes, but also to say the contribution in kind from the partners is the course development and we're not looking for mm -hmm. you know, new resources. I mean, we're doing it anyway. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, I think, would be more appealing than a, a component of a bigger model. They've got to understand the model as a whole. So I think we should be the main set of partners in kind contribution is this. And these are the other components that will expedite the development. And I think that could work. Mm -hmm. Are you asking about how we're going to assess the students for this grant? No. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I mean, the, the kind of automated testing and assessment is part of a bigger model. Uh -huh. And uh, I think it needs to be included in. in because I mean, the reason for that is it's, it's a way to scale a project like this hmm. from an economic sustainability point of view by order of magnitude. Yeah, well, perhaps that, that should be the bigger project sustainability and business models that will drive a long term future. Yeah. And that would include the sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, no, I think yeah, as, a, as, as a group to agree on it, it would have to be the, the OERU model, and this would just be one aspect of it. Yeah. And the thing is, we've got the logic model on the table anyway. Um, yes. that's, yeah. that's the project. Mm -hmm. Plus, we've got a, a pretty, pretty progress pretty far with detailed planning uh, of a prototype. There aren't many people around the world that can get that right in the time frames. Yeah. They also split a proposal. So if we were to focus on assessment and assessment for credit, would the funding in the loans be in part used as a source of the scholarships that we're talking about for the students who are in the um, prototype? Potentially yes, but uh, um, I mean potentially yes. Uh, I mean one can include it in there, but I'm, to be honest, I mean, you, you, we've got to be very careful as a for a sustainability point of view, but also shooting yourself in the foot proverbially with your bid. So if you're asking for scholarships of the five thousand dollars or whatever per student for scholarships, you're actually proving that your model is not sustainable because you're dependent on the wrong funding for making the thing I think work. Think we can drive it along with five thousand dollars? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but, but one lecture per child, you know. Blah, 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 but what I'm saying is. Um, the scholarship should be limited to the 100 students. Yes. In other words, they'll make yes. the, the, fun, the funding proposal scholarships. So it's actually part of the process to design the model. I mean, what makes work, makes worth our effort as the OER Foundation to actually draft and put, you know, put the time and effort into their proposal for somebody to go and get the money for them is I want to see the strategic components of the model being built that we don't have. So that, and it's a script, it's, it, it's, it's scenario planning, that's what it is. Um, we know the stuff we've got and we know the stuff we can achieve. What we don't know is the strategic elements, how quickly we can get that, like automated testing, it's a complex problem. Um, like getting the infrastructure for academic volunteers international, it's a complex problem. Mm -hmm. And so if you get the money to make that stuff happen, it's openly licensed. Then we've got the pieces of this puzzle, we get the OER new operational in a flock, we get done right. Well, there another suggestion that we could also develop the free courses for laying the foundations for success. It's a sort of preparation part. And at USQ, David runs the Open Access College, I don't know if you'd like to tell us about the tertiary preparation program. But one of the things is that it prepares students for a reasonable chance of success. Okay, well, um, I, I mean, these sorts of courses have been mentioned by a few other participants here that I've had a couple of chats with people about that. Essentially, um, uh, courses that are non-award courses, but to prepare students to undertake tertiary studies successfully, and they've got a pretty good track record of doing that, and they are uh, generally almost totally in a format that are available as OERs. Um, and uh, like really for the OER, as I see it, for the OERU platform to be really successful, we need to think about uh, the sorts of studies that a lot of students might need to undertake in order to 
assure them of success once they and once they formally enrol in undergraduate courses. Uh, so uh, we do have a number of basically tertiary preparation courses, generic uh, courses um, in mathematics and general studies, academic communications and so on, uh, which we can you know, make available um, on the OER U wiki platform, uh, if you like, as a precursor for people who Maybe it's that in the the K-12 papers. So uh, that could help a lot with the preparation of K-12 for the OER model. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we also have a safety net for people who jump into the OERU and can't go anywhere because they lack some of the skills. But it did also say, well, you're not making progress here, but this is available. So as well as preparing, yeah. it can be a fallback safety net for students who might find this struggle to you know, deal with the materials that we put up. That's right. I mean, what, one of the other things I've like mentioned here is the need for kind of a bit of um, advice, advisory type of scheme for, for the people who may well consider enrolling through OERU. And maybe part of that scheme is, hey, we don't think you're necessarily going to cope very well by you know, jumping straight into some of these um, first year undergraduate courses. Do these preparatory courses first of all, they're not a war, but they're going to give you a good chance of succeeding further down the track. Yeah. Well, in, in the same way that we don't have a Bachelor of General Studies, we actually have a Certificate of Tertiary Studies, so we could award those types of courses. Oh, nice. And, and nice. For, yeah, nice. I mean, at the present time, these courses, if you complete them successfully, you're guaranteed entry into all of our undergraduate programs and lots of other Australian institutions as well. It's very small. They're actually on license to a couple of places here in New Zealand. Uh, they're available as OERs on the Open Coursework Consortium site, or some of them are available there at the present time. Um, but I think this would be a uh, good platform to have them on. Well, I, th I think that's, that's great, 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 but I don't see how it fits into the grant. Oh, this one, the We'd be doing I'm that sure. anyway, wouldn't we, if these are all we are and we need them? Oh, no, we'll be, and this is the beauty of it, we can be doing it anyway. Yeah. But one of the uh, questions they're asking us to respond to is this K-12 tertiary transition. Yeah, okay, and we have the stuff. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's the strength. Yeah. Um, there's a statement in here that I'd love to spend the whole thing, but... There's a statement in here that refers to how um, we're not, the United States students are not competing, you know, we're, we're not doing as well as other parts of the world in certain areas in education. And I think that drawing on international uh, coursework actually makes this quite unique. And it exposes our students to international courses. So I actually think that if we, that that might give this some extra strength. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very, very good. So that offering would be uh, pretty interesting, actually, and quite unique. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for that. Um, one of the things that I think might be important if we are going to include this K-12 aspect, is to consider in amongst the international volunteers some very careful thought about adults and children uh, working together. Um, it's terribly important we don't, this is high risk type of thing, we have um, you know, ways of protecting children. And while these courses are good, we could be putting them in touch with the wrong people if we're not careful. It's uh, advice we'll, we'll receive. So it's a, a challenge for everybody, but that needs to be taken into account. But I think the K to 12 thing is for adults, isn't it? Uh, yeah, what, what we yeah, we wouldn't deal with, we're, I think yeah. we'd have all kinds of legal problems dealing with minors, so we wouldn't really deal with them at all. Mm -hmm. but there is some of that in here, I think you would find any problem with it. And we can we need to be very cognizant of, of the risks. Um, you know, in this space, I would see it as the kind of the music in year 13, kind of taking one sort of university course. 
Yeah. Which, which is in, it's within our, our in, in the interior that's part of the model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I thank you very, very much for the, the candid and, and, and open reflections. Uh, what I'm hearing is, you know, I'm keen to work on a proposal of sorts, and uh, it's more than likely that OER Foundation will move forward with this. Um, I will attempt to recruit, uh, you know, an uh, international American partner or partners with the clear understanding that our founding partners are most welcome and, and will be open you know, to continue. Um, and, and by the very nature of part of it, I feel you have to be part of it. But I mean, I do appreciate the dynamics of uh, funding. You know, we have an agency that relies on you know, the goodwill of others as well. So uh, you know, I am familiar with that. So that's kind of the sense from where I'm sitting from the foundation's perspective. I, of course, welcome you know, anybody that has an interest in developing aspects of this kind of proposal to please join us. Um, and the reason for this is very simple. Uh, funding opportunities continue to arise. And, and you know, if we get this right, we've got a bunch of proposals ready to take us forward. And the point is we actually got to do this stuff for our day. So this is not wasted. This is really a, you know, an opportune time to actually think through the plan of what we've discussed over these, in these last two days. Make sense, everybody? Is everybody happy? Is anybody opposed to? I'm just thinking that funding around the training of the volunteer tutors yeah. is, is something that is a start-up that we might... And, 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 that, and that's a very good example because we don't have you know, all the OERs and resources available for the training. Of, the, of these folks, that's a very good example of a strategic project. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, I like that. And I think that volunteer tutoring is an innovation in itself. So just getting it started is yeah. worthy of funding. Yeah. And look, the other, the other part is, I mean, there's a European Commission that's happening with the OER test initiative that gets a key number of players in this space. Uh, and, and for us, the important thing is the value of actually getting this to work. That's what's important for us from the foundation's perspective. Great. Okay, so we hang over for a round. Yes, okay, well, thank you. What, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, yesterday morning, we, um, we started off with uh, some objectives. Um, and uh, prior to that, we had a welcome from our Tanga Whenua um, with Huata. And Huata talked about the phases of the moon and the full moon and that, uh, the effects that has on people in terms of lunacy. Um, I won't say that we've been behaving like lunatics, but we've been very, very sharp in our thinking and our processes and our activities over the last two days. Um, I'm, I'm personally astonished at the. Um, the interactions and the, the value and the nature and the way those interactions had happened and have gone forward. I, I put the kind of challenge out there yesterday that you know that we need to be constructive and work on the you know the things we needed to work on because we didn't have a lot of time um, and we've done that and we've done that fantastically. You know the groups I've been in and the uh, larger groups and the interactions uh, from the people here and from my point of view, the people externally as well that have been feeding in, and I've been following the Twitter feed, you know, and the, the, you know, the contributions that the external participants have made, uh, thank you for those that have just been great. And uh, we, we all seem to be on the same page on this. So I'm not even going to go through the objectives. We set some, set some objectives for the, for the planning session. Well, we haven't necessarily met them, but we've made some significant progress towards uh, those and we've got a planning process in place which is, uh, I think, uh, good work and we've got some really good longer term strategies that will build on that and we've got, I think, a very committed, um, politically committed <laughs> uh, group of partners that will make this happen. So from my point of view, from the OER Foundation's point of view, from where we've come from with three anchor partners to 13 and the external people with you, I think it's just astonishing. So I can't say any more than that. Thank you all. It's been astonishing. But what I'd like to do is open the floor to you guys so that you can give some feedback and um, tell it how it is. Thank you.
remembering that we've got drinks in 10 minutes. We've <laughs> <laughs> got drinks and liquors out there in 10 minutes, so but please take the time <laughs> to, to share. I'd like to thank the, um, the original triad. I had to avoid everyone else. Um, the brains behind this. I mean, it's an exciting concept of opening it up to the rest of us. And the organisation of this meeting here, we all managed to get here and um, be videoed <laughs> in the <laughs> open. Just Thank you very much for all the organisation and for, as I say, for the innovation and stimulation. Sorry, no, I, I neglected to thank Pia and uh, the Splash people, camera operators, for their work. Thank you, it's been fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank the OER Foundation and Wayne and Robin for being here because no way could I have become a member of this because our university has in no way committed themselves to this. But as an FT4OWB member, I'm here and I'm, I hope I can, I mean, I was just talking to Wayne, I was telling him, I'm personally I'm thinking whether my college can offer one of the courses that's already on OER as a certificate course next session and then that can input into this. So I'll try for that. This is, that's Thank what you very much. Yeah. Pick up an already available material and use that. I mean I have to prepare the assessment tools over the next two months and then I can set it going next August. That's what I plan to do. Thanks, everybody. I mean, and let me tell you, I had a tough time getting here because the New Zealand uh, consulate wouldn't let me come in. Uh, yeah, it, it took a uh, lot of effort uh, from Robin and uh, what's name? Rhonda. Rhonda. They had to work very hard to get me here. The immigration me at 10 o'clock at night. And I thought it was a telemarketer. <laughs> 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 and the reason, I mean, you wouldn't believe this. Believe they it. wanted everything in hard copy. They wouldn't accept any sure. email applications. Or the email invitation that OERF sent me, that they, I mean, they didn't <laughs> accept it. They said, we want, you know, black and, I mean, Blue ink signatures, and those papers had to come from here, to there, and you know. I'm, and I said, look, I'm in the last four, five years, wherever I've traveled, I've used the. E I mean, we've all traveled by what comes to us to mail, but no, New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> we want everything in color. Some improvements to be made. <laughs> I think this is a great example showing that no matter what, um, all year I know this has made everything possible to make it happen. Which is kind of what we were discussing yesterday for dinner, and we were concluding on being um, the illusion that we will believe that this will work and um, it will happen. But I think what I've seen happening over the last two days, and especially today, people from different countries, institutions, the first day we all had a different idea, concept, what it was, or are you, and what it will probably look like or work. And today, by the end of the day, we. I will determine that we're going to make it happen. So I think we all deserve a big congratulations <laughs> on working together. So well done, everyone. <laughs>
just uh, socialise and have a drink. Thank you. 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 Thank